terminated President Clark today. I uh, just wanted your reaction. Do you think it's the right decision? Well, that, that's what boards do, and uh, that's that's a part of, of life in, in that business. But I've had a, a very good working relationship with President Clark, and I uh, think a lot of him. I wish him well. Um, are, you, sorry, are you disappointed with the decision that the board made? Well, South Carolina State is, I think, is a great institution. It has a, a terrific uh, history behind it, and we want it to be operating uh, in full capacity, 100%. I know the uh, students have been, uh, that is the, there haven't been that many students. It's been falling off over, over the years, which of course that's where the money comes from. It makes it very difficult. I know they've, they've had their ups and downs, but uh, I've uh, had a, a great working relationship with President Clark. Uh, I think the world of him, but those decisions are the ones that the boards make. That's what they're there for. What do you think should be the next step going forward with, the, with, that, with that university? I think they should aspire to be a, an excellent university. They should do what they think is necessary to get enrollment up. Enrollment has been a problem in a lot of schools for years. Uh, as you know, there's, there's even conversation at the University of South Carolina about how many in-state have opposed to how many out-of-state. So those are the kind of questions that boards wrestle with. But I, I have confidence in, in the school. The, the history is, is really a, quite an illustrious one, and I would like to see them doing uh, extremely well. But do you have confidence in the board? Well, we, yes, I have confidence in all the boards in the state. I mean, they're selected in various ways, and uh, yes, I have confidence in all of them. Uh, there's some discussion about a business grant program uh, with ARP money. How do you, how do you envision a, a business You're talking grant? about the meeting here today? Yeah. I think that's a good idea, because uh, even though a lot of our businesses received some funds during the, the pandemic, that uh, did not fix the problem which was not brought on by them. We had <coughs> um, government mandate closures uh, all around the, the country, fewer here than in other places, but those in other places affected business here. There are some of our businesses here who couldn't get parts or couldn't get supplies or couldn't get various things from other states because of activities and non-activities going on, on there. So the extent that we can measure the damage that was done strictly by the pandemic and, and not related to any uh, fault or deficiency on those businesses. We want to try to help and fill that gap if we can. Um, and can you just expand upon the broadband discussion we had today? Uh, yeah. 400 million is going to be needed from is what's being proposed by ORS to, to get this going. Do you think that'll be enough? And uh, I don't know what we ought to. We have to be careful how we spend money and have to do it carefully. And there's a question of, uh, about cable or, or uh, satellite and internet and all of that, uh, wireless. But we've, we've got to get this broadband. We have to get this access out to all the people in the state. It's, it's clear now. I mean, we had the same discussion uh, decades ago about telephones and uh, fax machines and all these sorts of things. Now we're in a completely different situation now, but it is clear that to be competitive in this world today, you've got to have that broadband access. And I think it'll help us in more ways than we even know. And I'm glad to see that the businesses in this state are working so closely together to see that we get it out. And that includes the, the co-ops as well as the uh, telecom companies. Governor, how do you think that broadband access, especially for rural South Carolinians, will, will help? I think it'll, it'll provide access to untold possibilities, both in education and health. I'm particularly interested in, in those two areas because uh, there are people that need to see the doctor that uh, don't have gas or flat tire, or got children at home or don't have time or at work or for a thousand different reasons, or can't get to the doctor's office until the doctor's gone home. So the internet access to telehealth, telemedicine, all that would, would open up possibilities that
would take an enormous amount of pressure and result in better health for our people and education. Uh, we know there how important that is, but just, just the communication, you've got to be able to communicate with the rest of the world, which is, is uh, literally possible right now. We want all of our people to be able to have that access.